Hello, everyone. This is Leonard Guzman here with Emily Robinson on the Modern Divorce Podcast. It's May 12th, 2022, and I'm doing my uh, murder mystery podcast voice. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, are you into that like murder podcast thing (laughs) where it's like really popular right now? I haven't done it, but it sounds fascinating. I'd like to do it. I'm sure there's like some divorce element to it where the husband and wife get into it and someone gets murdered and no one can figure it out. Yeah, I know, right? You could you could have a divorce one. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of the stories we go over ends up being one of those um, podcasts. Um, so yeah, um, we're off subject here, but let's get back into it. Um, so. Um, yeah, let's get into the news right away. <laughs> it's one of those days where it feels like uh, uh, it's Friday, but it's really not. It's uh, Thursday, so it's it's. Uh, I don't know what it. Why, why does the brain do that? It's like too many things going on. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, this is a weird story here. So, so what we do um, before we get into it is we go over the news of the day that has to do with divorce. Someone listening to this is like, hey, I didn't know this was a murder mystery podcast episode. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) We're changing it up. We're changing it up. Um, uh, I haven't prepared for it, so (laughs) we'll we'll figure it out later. Um, So what we do is we go over the news and we go over like what's trending on Google about divorce, celebrity news. There's always some celebrity going through something uh court case or divorce um there's stuff about financial tips um getting through um getting started child custody um so this one is the first uh story this is interesting because this uh the headline reads um this is from daily mail uh dot co dot uk i wonder like the stories we pull up from these websites if like the people in the industry of the journalist industry are like, hey, that's like the worst source. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I know, uh, right? Because we don't know. We don't know. We're just guessing. Yeah, so so this one's interesting because um, so dating, the, the headline reads, dating in middle age is my superpower. A divorced woman of 351 reveals how sleeping with eight men in a year she met on Tinder helped her get over heartbreak. So this uh, lady, um, this author, uh, Laura Williams, um, 51, who documented sleeping with eight Tinder dates in one year uh, in a memoir, says that dating is her superpower. At 47 years old, Williams' husband of 22 said, he was having an affair uh, following a divorce that stripped her of her identity. Williams started dating again. She documented her sexual adventures in the 2021 memoir available, which was recently released in paperback. Williams told the New York Post that she hopes her memoir will help women understand themselves and get in touch with how their sexuality can heal them. So, um, a little bit of it is um, Williams had been married to her husband for 22 years by the time she was 47 years old. Um, the couple had three kids together, an apartment in Manhattan and a house in the country. So she says our sex life wasn't uh, great anymore. There wasn't really any passion between us, Williams told the New York Post, but I had expected that. Um, so it goes on, uh, let's see. So it started, uh, she, she goes death and divorce, and I'm not saying one is preferable to the other, but I could say uh, for myself that the experience was akin to grieving. Uh, William said to Grace Untethered, uh, host Holly Herzog, the loss of my identity was so jarring that I really questioned who, uh, who I, if, if I'm not the wife. Um, so she goes on Tinder. So it's, I guess like this is how she felt like she could overcome you know um her her past marriage and move on yeah I mean I think it's a a interesting way to to do it and why not whatever works for you if there's something 
that makes you feel good about yourself or that allows you to experience things maybe you weren't experiencing in your marriage or kind of start over, I say, go for it. You know, like your needs and interests change as time goes on, as you get older, what you're looking for in a marriage, you know, at first versus later. So yeah, go for it. I'm looking for details because I'm, I'm curious, like how many times she, uh, <laughs> she swiped this, like, like I was looking at the numbers, like maybe like, how does this work? Like how many times do you swipe? And I couldn't find details. Um, you have to buy the book, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go to the next story here. Um, so Sam Hunt's wife, uh, Hannah Lee uh, Fowler, uh, calls off divorce. The source says they're doing um, their best. Uh, this is from people.com. So um, Hannah Lee Fowler, who's expecting a baby girl with Sam Hunt, May first filed for divorce in February. The pregnant wife of country singer Sam Hunt is hitting the brakes on their split just two months after she first filed for divorce. Hannah Lee Fowler asked the court in April to dismiss the case, and a judge signed off on her request according to documents obtained by people. Uh, the reversal comes after Fowler, 33, first filed for divorce in February, then withdrew her initial complaints hours later and refiled the same day in a different uh, county. TMZ was the first to report this. Uh, they're doing their best every day, a source tells people. Sam and his wife are continually looking forward to the next chapter. He's just thinking about his family and what's to come. So they go through all this, and then they're just like, oh, okay, we'll pump the brakes. Does that mean they're going to, like, does this all just stop, or is this like, oh, just put it on pause? How does this work? Well, if you didn't file anything yet, then you can just put it on pause and just, you know, not, not do anything with the court till you're ready. But if you've already filed, there's not really a way to put the case on pause. You either don't just don't take any action and have the case move slowly, which is typically fine. Um, or, you know, if, the, if it's too slow, the court will at some point say, hey, we need to have a hearing to see what's going on here or you can dismiss the case and cancel it um, and then refile it if you decide that you want to proceed with it. It looks like for them, it looks like she filed in uh, February. February and then she dismissed it in April and then she refiled, it sounds like. So for them, the pause was like completely pulling the case, but you don't have to do that. You can just not do anything on the case let it sit there while you try to reconcile and then keep going with the case if you decide to okay this one this next story is interesting because i was i'm wondering how this guy got caught so um this is out of um kr uh, gv.com so man arrested on Bigamy charge accused of faking signatures on divorce papers. So a uh, 25-year-old Brownsville man was arraigned on a bigamy charge after police say he forged signatures on divorce papers and got married to a woman while still being married to his first wife. So Joshua um, Eduardo Rosales uh, is accused of forging the victims and judges' signature to produce divorce papers, according to a news release from the Brownsville <laughs> Police Department. So uh, Rosalis uh, was still legally married to the victim when he got married to the second female. Um, so I mean, like, how did he? Did he not think like they would check on? Did you sign this judge? Like, how right? did this all get verified? Well, there's. I mean, there isn't anyone looking over your shoulder to verify it. So you know, it, it, he could probably. Um, marry the other person and if nobody ever looked up the old divorce papers probably wouldn't have ever been known now wait, what I don't know is if when you apply for a marriage license I don't know if they check if you have any um, you know papers on record but they wouldn't know if you were 
uh, well, they would know if you were married before because you'd have that record. So maybe if they didn't see a divorce record in there, they might be like, oh, that's weird. But yeah, if you try to get married when you're already still married, it, the second marriage is not a valid marriage. And um, so it would be, you know, void. And uh, but the spouse, I mean, they wouldn't know, like, you probably don't go pulling your your ex, your future spouse's divorce records with their ex. I guess some people might, but I don't think most people do. <laughs> but that's a good question. I actually don't know if the, the, when you apply to get a marriage certificate, I don't know if they check if your divorce was like went through or was fraudulent. I mean, like if, if it, looked like it was processed and showed up in the public record, they would think that it exists. If it's not showing up, then they may, I guess they could see that you had a prior marriage and they may wonder where that is. Okay. <laughs> well, never, you never know. <laughs> okay. Um, so this next article, uh, considering a divorce, here's how to prepare. Um, this is from a uh, positively, I'm going to butcher this city. I think it's, Osceola, Osceola, uh, looks like it's in um, um, Florida somewhere. Uh, we'll have to Google this later, but um, let's look at what they have to say. It, it seems like it's, um, it's uh, they're doing their due diligence um, considering divorce. Here's how to prepare. So get the documents together uh, while divorce is an emotional ordeal. It, it, also is a legal process which involves dividing assets. Um, you also want to get the essential items such as you and your children's birth certificates um, and passports. Often one partner will know uh, more about where vital documents such as these account statements and other critical data are kept. Calculate your living expenses Divorce will probably mean adjusting from living and paying household expenses together to having to manage on your own. Credit in your own name. So today, many people have credit on their own, but it can be the case in a marriage that one partner has been the primary wage earner and the source of credit for the household. Determine uh, your non-negotiable. So when you're assessing the end of the marriage, you're going to need to think about what assets are essential to you, get the sense of what property you feel is the most important for you to retain, uh, contact an attorney to evaluate your divorce case. Once you have done the preliminary work of gathering information, creating possible budget and assessing your needs and wants, it's time to uh, meet with an experienced divorce attorney. Um, so what do you think, all good points here? Yeah, those are all good points. I do want to say, I just looked it up and the clerks do not verify if you were divorced. So, um, you probably still could get married and then you'd have to find out, oh, they were married and then annul the marriage. But anyway, that was the last question. Back to this question. Um, no, those are all good points. You know, you, you don't want to be at the mercy of your spouse if you're going through a divorce. You don't want to have to get all the financial information from them, have none of your own credit and none of your own assets in your name, if possible, to avoid that. It's better to know that you have your own nest egg and even though it's a community property state and you're going to be awarded half of the community property you still have to go through all the motions of fighting for it and transferring it and arguing about what is whose and having something in your name that you have access to um, is is a really good idea all right uh let's get into the part of the show where we go over um posts people put um online it's called uh ask emily anything and so people are sometimes they're starting in their divorce journey they're starting to kind of realize like okay kind of what do they say there's something like if you you, you got to listen to like whispers you got to like there's like things leading on so sometimes we cover that um whether it's um you know there's also child custody things there's um all the works here so let's get to the first one here so um this person is uh at the end i guess of their uh, journey so settlement reached um it's over so you just got out of our first and only mediation session it lasted about um the length of a 
a Marvel movie. So I think that's like uh, three, four hours almost. Um, uh, after we separated, I easily tripled um, my income without her interference in my life. And she took a chunk of that money on her way out despite doing nothing uh, for it. I hope she thinks of me every time she blows a portion of it on uh, fireballs and cigarettes. I, I haven't I haven't had fireball in God, at least a decade. <laughs> You're giving away how old we are. Oh my gosh, um, cigarettes? Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm I haven't been a cigarette person, but that fireball. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Um, maybe they're youngsters. I don't know. That's a college uh, drink. You, it's like a right. budget. <laughs> budget. Okay. <laughs> So she starts working full-time Monday for the first time in eight years, and we'll be sharing our earnings and our expenses, which is all um, I ever asked for uh, during the marriage. I finally get it for a few weeks until the decree comes, but I finally uh, got her to make an equal effort. Um, that's my victory here, getting an equal partner for a while. Well, I, I actually see that happening a lot. It's almost like too little, too late. You know, finally the person is willing to do what you had been pushing or asking for, or, you know, whatever it is that was a stressor in the marriage, but it's, it's too late. It's, you've already gone through the frustration and the headaches and the stress of it. So um, it sounds like that's kind of what's happening in this situation. However, it's also good that, um, that she's getting, you know, on her, I think they said, I think that was the male talking about his yeah, ex-wife. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, you know, she's, she's going to have to do that because, you know, unfortunately support, just spousal support, child support, they're just usually not enough to, um, you know, be a income that's, that you can survive on, especially in California, uh, because you're splitting one person's income between two different households now. And so it's sort of a, a reality that unless there's a lot of assets or independent wealth, um, the, the person who hasn't worked probably is gonna have to work to some degree or find a way to generate some income. Next one is a mental health um, issue here. Um, so this person still misses uh, Mrs. Him, um, which I assume is the wife, the ex-wife. So together 10 years and married for three. He left me almost two months ago. Um, I try to focus on his negative traits, like people tell you to do uh, to help you move on. But um, you know what? Everyone has small flaws all in all. He was, he was a decent, good man. No cheating, being mean, violent, or any serious deal breakers. I try to see friends as often as I can. The other night, as I was with friends um, at my house, I just started missing him so much. Even when friends are around, I just intensely started wishing he was still there with me. I'm trying to forget um, and I'm failing at doing this. Any advice? That's really hard. I mean, you know, as usual, I say you have to get some support, some emotional support, um, whether that's through a, a support group or therapy or family members or friends, like this isn't something you can do alone or that you should do alone. Um, divorce is really hard and emotional and you shouldn't go through it alone. You need someone to talk to and that will really help you be strong in the difficult times, you know, um, but it's a process. There's good days, there's bad days. And you know, sadness and missing people is part of the process. So you, you need to find tools that help you get through that healthy tools, you know, that help you get through that so that you can get over it as quickly as possible. But there's also no shame in not being over it right away. It's totally normal. All right. Our last post of the day. This is interesting. So this is a getting started one. Um, so divorce class, divorce care classes, um, I'm a betrayed spouse leaving my husband. I've been to two classes so far. I look ahead in the book and I'm not sure if I'll continue classes or just skip um, the triggering ones, looking for advice on uh, if, if I should take these classes, especially if you, you're the one um, who's betrayed and emotionally abused. 
What kind of class did they say? It says divorce care classes. I haven't seen hmm. this yet. Well, I've never heard of that, but maybe that's like how to take care of yourself in a divorce. Um, I'm a big proponent always of like education and classes and things that will help you get through stuff, especially if you're the person that you feel has been like abused or put down or left or abandoned. Um, absolutely. Do whatever you can to find strength. I haven't heard a class actually called that, but to me, it sounds kind of like self-care and how to care for your own emotions in divorce. So I think that sounds wonderful. Everybody should take that going through a divorce. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the Modern Divorce Podcast, and we'll see you next week. Bye.